um, you know, we're not we're not approaching them on anything, and, and so we're just going to continue to listen on, on other players, but the players with the no move clauses are, are the Rungla ones that are, are going to stick around for Marco a bit. Kaspar. And that was Marco Kasper taken eighth by Detroit. Steve Eiserman making the announcement. The center out of Austria. Someone who's intrigued a lot of different people in the NHL community. I've heard all three of you talk to him, uh, talk about him offset. What intrigues you most about him, Jason? Well, 200 foot game. He's another guy that can play the wing and, and center ice. And what he did is only grow exponentially as the season got harder. His best hockey was played in the playoffs. He's had a great program coming out of Rogla. The Abbott brothers there have developed him. And he's this is a responsible player that I don't know that his ceiling is a top six forward. He's definitely a 3F, like a high end 3F that can do a lot of different things. He's a little bit of a Swiss Army knife secondary scorer. You know, what's fascinating to me is that this guy has had such a drive to get to this point. At 16 years old, he leaves Austria. He goes to Sweden. He learns the language in three months. He decides that, yeah, you know what, I'm still going to go to school while I'm playing in the SHL, the NHL equivalent over there. So he's sitting beside guys in high school, yet, oh, yeah, i got to go on a road trip here. Sorry, boys, i got to go. So you have to love the fact that he's learned to cook, clean, do everything on his own from the age of 16 in an entirely different country. My goodness, if I think about my children and how I be so tough to separate from them to do that yet this guy had all the will to do it his parents gave him the leeway to do it and it's culminated in being picked eighth overall Detroit's starting to build up some big kind of uh, status in terms of forwards that can be physical Carter Mazur University of Denver and now they add Casper who's a real physical guy it's going to be exciting to be a Red Wings fan again let's get to Jeff Merrick this is such a Steve Eiserman pick as the rebuild continues. You know, they have the Rookie of the Year in Moritz Sider, Lucas Raymond, a future star. We know the general manager, Steve Eiserman, is patient. Last year at the draft, it was Simon Edvinson. Sixth overall, the defenseman we expect to play on the wings this season. Sebastian Costa, you identify the goaltending, the Oil Kings. He goes 15th overall. The thing about the wings is they have a very high-end talent with their prospect pool. You look up front, Jonathan Bergman, Theodore Niederbach, uh, Elmer Soderblom. But what they need is, as someone from another team just texted me, someone who will go through a wall to win. Lots of teams were high on Marco Casper. The Detroit Red Wings were the ones that got him. And he brings an element that few, if any other players in this draft can bring. This is... This is another hit pick from the Red Wings. There's a lot of disappointed general managers on this floor right now that didn't get Marco Casper. Let's hear from him and Carolyn Cannon. As he gets set up here with his mic and Marco, I know you don't have your driver's license yet in Austria, so you always bike to the rink. Have you imagined yet what it'll be like biking to the rink in Detroit? I haven't imagined yet, <laughs> but it, I'm just thankful to, to be picked by, by such a great franchise such great players in the past and it's truly really an honor and I'm thankful to my family too and, and my past teams uh, especially Rögle and Klagenfurt too and and also my, my agent so it's just it's awesome feeling. Okay what's more nerve-wracking then waiting in the seat for your name to be called or perhaps starring in an Austrian film? <laughs> I mean uh, I was I was really young when I, when I was in that film so it was, it was pretty nerve-wracking now uh, being here but it's just a fun experience and it's so, so, so cool. Maybe some foreshadowing too because you were wearing the red and white and now you're donning the red and white for Detroit. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, Carolyn, maybe no surprise because for a fifth straight year, the Detroit Red Wings select a European player uh, with their first overall pick. They've missed the playoffs the last six years. So. It's interesting you say that, David, because when you look at Steve Eiserman's career and think about the players he played with, whether it was Datsuk from Russia, Zetterberg from Sweden, or Lidstrom from Sweden, now he's doing the same thing. Talk about Raymond from Sweden, Seider from Germany, Casper from Austria. That multinational group coming together for Steve Eiserman is something that he had experience with a player and now doing it as a general Don't manager. Don't forget Simon Edvidsson too. That guy's legit big time good. He's coming to Detroit. He's six foot four defense and the plays on the left side. Hawk and Anderson is the key. Hawk and Anderson is a phenomenal scout for the Red Wings. He's been there almost 30 years. He's the key to getting those Swedish players. Jason, let's get your Marco Casper scouting pack. Well, we're going to 
take a look at Casper here, coming off the wall, shielding the puck. He can go to open space because he's a big enough body that he can shield people. Gets it to the net, quick release. Down below the goal line, again, that's an agility. Like that play right there when he can spin off a check, take it to the paint, make a play. How about out front the net? Let's just do a little bit of this and that, a little JVR in his game down low around the net for a quick tuck. This kid is going to be hard to play against in hard areas, and he's going to score some goals, but be responsible everywhere else on the ice. He's got more of a North American presence than a lot of kids that are coming out of that league right now, and a lot of that's because how physical he is. Yeah, you, you don't sleep on Steve Eiserman. He was a big part of the architect. Julian Breesbaugh has done an incredible role in taking him to the finish line in Tampa, but Steve Eiserman built a lot of what we saw Tampa and their back-to-back -back Stanley Cup championships. Uh, so we get Detroit has their men and Marco Casper and maybe the envy of many other teams as you see uh, Shane Doan yucking it up with them right there. Uh, and next on the board is the Buffalo Sabres. Round two of the NHL draft. Here's a few news and notes for you. Uh, St. Louis has acquired a 2022 third round pick, number 73, in exchange for Vili Husso, who is reportedly signed to a three-year extension with Detroit. Go! A pending UFA. It's all about the goalies, baby. Elsewhere, Vitek Vanacek and a 2022 second rounder headed to the Devils in exchange for a second round pick and a third round pick. Let's check in with NHL Network insider Elliot Friedman. Elliot, what insight can you give us on those two deals and anything else that you're hearing as we get set for round two here? All right, Jack, you said reported extension for Huso. I will confirm it for you. It's three years at $4.75 million a season. Huso was signed in Detroit it and that's why it goes early here on day two. All right, the Red Wings taking Dylan James at number 40. He was named the 2021-22 USHL Rookie of the Year. Red all but all rookie scores in that league in numerous statistical categories this season. Goals, assists, points, power play goals, and game winning goals. Reader, this kid's clutch. He is left winger. He's a thinker of the game. Andre Pilat is a comparison that I think a lot of people talk about, which if you're compared to Andre Pilat means that you are a, uh, a player who can play in all situations. Uh, you said he was rookie of the year in the USHL a couple of years ago. Plays with right, lots of energy. He's good size. At six Buffalo feet, he's six feet, pushing about six one, 180 pounds. Opius he's got a gritty Leonard. and a real compete level of the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, you just can't have enough of the type of Dylan James players as you move along and build your organization's excellent pick. You're seeing some highlights here, him shooting the puck. Detroit selects Scott St. I'd like to see him shoot it even more. Dimitri Uchelnikov. <laughs> All right, and 52, Steve Eiserman and the Red Wings. That pick officially in and announced as we take a look at Hughes there, embracing his family and friends. Dmitry Pachelnikov going to the Detroit Red Wings. Well, you know, the Red Wings are not afraid to, to go to Russia. And I, th I talk about Steve Eiserman, and you talk about the multinational team that they're starting to put together. We've seen it. You know, going to Germany with Sider, going to Sweden with Zetterberg. They go to the Russian and Buchelnikov here. So just continuing to build what's a multinational team. And why wouldn't you? If you're Steve Eiserman, that's the type of team you played on when you talk about the Lindstroms, the Zetterbergs, uh, you know, those type of players going on to Datsuk, so on and so forth. Multinational team to win cups, a multinational team moving forward here with the Red Wings. Buchelnikov, he went from the number 47th ranked European skater at the midterm to unranked by NHL Central Scouting. But in Steve Eiserman, we trust. That is the mantra there in Detroit. He went kind of off the board. Anaheim select with Mo Sider. From Everybody yes, had him no, ranked between 15 and 20. He took him in the top five. So we'll see how that one works out. Sort of high from level. Lexons, you go at 17 years Anton, old, you hope to get Johansson. into a couple of games. By 18, you hope to be a starter. When all of that gets wiped out and you're essentially playing in your first year, you're two years behind in your development. And for a position that requires the most games in order to get better and the most experience, that is the position that was hurt most by the pandemic right across the world. I don't know, care how many games you played. You didn't play a full schedule. If you did, it wasn't a great against great competition. All right, Hicks coming too. fast and furious here in round number four. Noah Lava, David Gardner, Amadeus Lombardi, and last but not least, Paul O'Hara at 114. To the trade announcement, Montreal is trading pick number 128 to Vegas in exchange for Vegas fourth round pick 
in the 2023 draft. All right, so Donovan right there at 136 and 137. It's Tanias Thurin. He was named the Scholastic Player of the Year for North Bay in 2021-2022. Tanias spelled backwards, Saints. The play for championship, we'll only see how that works out, but uh, there's still work to be done there with Kyle Davidson in Chicago. You know, we talk about Chicago and acquiring picks. Some of the Colorado, Colorado Avalanche who had the first pick of their draft just came at the end of the <laughs> sixth round. Yeah. That's what happens when you win. You yeah. have to give up your drafts to win, and that's what Chicago did in the past. Yep. They gave up drafts. They won. They were a championship team for years. You eventually have to rebuild. Brennan Ali, the first name when it comes to alphabetical order. Raider, he goes 212 to Detroit. Played Avon, uh, Avon Old Farms, the U.S. Uh, high school program. Ali is a, uh, a player with a huge complete compete level, and this is what you take when you get into the sixth, seventh round, if you're not looking for older players, you're looking for players who might fill roles moving forward. Projection of a third, fourth line, uh, left shot center for Ali. He's got good size at six feet, 193 pounds. Plays also with a, a, a Lincoln, Nebraska a little bit. He's got a great shot, great skating ability. But it's his compete level. It's his ability to take pucks hard to the net. And it, and it just, one of these players that just is always on the puck works hard in every situation and when you have a player and most of the scouts have put down competes hard competes hard detroit red wings want players are going to compete hard and when you're in the sixth seventh round you're looking for players who want to move up the ladder and you've got to have that compete level you can see with avon firms 15 goals 27 in 27 games pretty good touch and only three players have ever been selected in their draft year from a Connecticut high school. Ted Drury, Chris Drury, and John Ammons, all three, went on to play in the NHL. Brennan Ali hoping that history holds true for that path as well. At one thing I just wanted later. to, oh, go ahead, Jason. if you didn't mind, one thing I wanted to add there, that was a fantastic clip for people who are like me, who are in the scouting business. This is an example, Reader talks about his compete, it's already in place. His mechanics and his stride in open ice are sound. The lack of strength in his core and his push, he's just not getting there yet. So this is the type of player that when I go scout, I'm looking at those mechanics. I'm saying he's got to compete. He looks like he's got above average buck skill. Those mechanics are going to pan out as with more strength. He's going to get better. Cool moment there for Brennan Ali. Great moment for David Gucciardi at 213.